wanna be loved by you, just you. She has been winning the hearts of many men, but she had never been able to gain self-confidence. Thousands followed her life, but no one could solve the mystery of her death. How did Marilyn Monroe spend her last day? Was her death a suicide or just a tragic accident? Was it a premeditated murder? But who had the reasons to kill the famous beauty? It is Biographer Express, and today we will try to understand one of the most famous mysteries of the middle of the last century. If you study her biography, then the version that Marilyn herself decided to take her own life is not without reason. The childhood and life of Norma Jean, Monroe's real name, were not so easy. Her mother, Gladys Pearl Monroe, can hardly be called an exemplary parent. She was her third child. Two older children lived with Gladys' first husband after the divorce. The mother didn't want to take the girl in her arms after birth. When the baby was two months old, she gave her to a foster family for maintenance. There was no place for diapers and sleepless nights in Gladys' stormy personal life. I probably should not have been born. My mother didn't want me at all. Apparently, I got in her way. And besides, I also brought disgrace to her. Gladys visited the child only on weekends and did it rarely and irregularly. As a result, little Norma did not perceive her as a mother. The foster family, either due to great piety and strictness or a commercial attitude towards foster children, they received $25 a month for each child, could not give Norma a feeling of being at home. They treated children with coolness, especially little sensitive Norma. Don't call me mom, her foster mother once told her. It was hard to please this couple. There was always something missing in me, although I don't remember that I did or brought something special to myself. Moreover, according to some reports, the future star was abused there. She was almost strangled with a pillow by other foster children because the girl cried a lot. Norma did not know her father. Marilyn will look for him till her death, both in real life and in other men. When the girl was seven years old, her mother took out a loan, bought a house, and took her back. It was difficult to say whether that was a desire to reunite with her daughter or a chance to improve her life. At that time, Gladys could only get a credit if she had a child. According to Monroe, her mother never kissed or hugged her. It was rarely possible to wait for a kind word from her. Gladys often had parties at home, with alcohol and men. For Norma, who grew up in a devout family, that was the first change in her outlook. Soon, the young woman was diagnosed with a terrible diagnosis, schizophrenia. The child was seized from her, and Gladys spent the rest of her life in psychiatric clinics. What was next? There were several foster families and an orphanage, which, according to Norma's recollections, were far from good. Being already a famous actress, she revealed the details of her stay there. There were gloomy rooms, ice water bathing, barracks discipline, and forced child labor. In those years, I never felt happy, she once told a journalist. One of Marilyn Monroe's husbands, playwright Arthur Miller, recalled that she could enter a room and immediately identify former orphans. The explanation was that there was an endless emptiness and loneliness in the eyes of every orphan. As I grew older, I knew I was different from other children because there were no kisses or promises in my life. I often felt lonely and wanted to die. In 1937, Gladys's friend Grace Goddard took custody of Norma, but even after that, the girl continued to wander from family to family. That happened after Grace's drunk husband tried to kill the 11-year-old girl. That incident was the first experience of physical contact with men, which distorted her understanding of love and sex. Little Norma just wanted to be loved like other children of her age. Probably, the future star had excessive demands on herself from that moment. She constantly tried to improve herself to earn someone's love. Until the end of her life, Marilyn suffered from low self-esteem. She could not sleep because of nightmares and experienced insecurity, shame, and suicidal thoughts. My childhood was like a movie that will be on the screen this year. But I got through it and survived. And what was next? She had three unsuccessful marriages with men who were famous representatives of their time. They saw in a young woman the image that was created in modern society of that time. A housewife, a mother, a woman for whom the word self-realization meant to become a good wife. Norma wanted a different fate for herself. Having stepped onto the acting path, she was forced to exist in the world of men. 
where a woman could only survive thanks to patronage. Often, at first, the young actress and model did not even have enough money for food. In Hollywood, actresses, singers, and prostitutes were roughly on equal footing. They all started the same way. The worst thing a girl could do was turn those guys down. The most obvious thing to use the weakness of men for beautiful women and turn it into their strength remained. So there was relations with various influential persons, and each of them became a stepping stone to Marilyn's dream. But you should not think that the young actress used men solely on her initiative. To be fair, even before Harvey Weinstein, getting on stage through somebody's bed was normal. And if not you, as Monroe said, there was still a line of girls outside the door. After signing a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox in December of 1995, the studio began openly exploiting Marilyn. The actress's salary was small. She had only $500 a week. The studio bosses did not want to raise the actress's salary, even when she became famous. Plus, throughout her career, Marilyn was seen as a decorative sexual accessory, and she had roles that were designed to add a touch of sex to the film. Obviously, it hit the young woman's pride. Even though Monroe had been studying acting all the time and had been dreaming of becoming a dramatic actress, there were only a few films that she was able to realize what she wanted. You got rather tired of playing the same kind of roles all the time and, and wanted to try something different? Well... I, it, it's not that I object to doing musicals or comedies. In fact, I rather enjoy it. But I would like to do also dramatic parts, too. Mm -hmm. uh, it Over time, the actress became a hostage to her image. The studio used the image as best they could and continued to give her the role of stupid blondes. Um, that people associate... Um, if you happen to have blonde hair, you know, naturally or not naturally, however, um, or if you're not out of shape in some way, you're, you're absolutely dumb. I mean, you're considered dumb. I don't know why that is. It's very, I think it's a very limited view. It got to the point that some roles were created solely to film a girl in a swimsuit. The scripts were not even coordinated with her, arguing that it was enough for Monroe to memorize only her lines. In some films, her character was covered with just a sheet or a towel. Did Marilyn want to play the prostitute in O. Henry's Full House or the secretary in Howard Hawke's comedy Monkey Business? A sexual symbol becomes a thing, an object, but I don't want to be an object. It is very nice to be part of people's desires, but I would like to know that I am accepted for my own sake. I do not consider myself a commodity, but I'm convinced that many people consider me in this capacity. I'm going to be a symbol of something, I'd rather have a sex than some other thing they got symbols of. <laughs> See, that's the trouble. A sex symbol becomes a thing. Well, I would just hate to be a thing. <laughs> Moreover, according to writer Lois Banner, the young actress was constantly bullied by studio bosses at the beginning and the peak of her career. To prove that she was an actress, Marilyn tried to perfect her work, often reshooting her lines dozens of times. I want to be a star. I want it more than anything else. This is the most valuable thing for me. It cannot be more valuable," she said to Irene Crosby. Filming was a difficult test for both her and her colleagues. Marilyn was so nervous while working on the set that she felt sick before shooting almost every scene, and red spots appeared in her face and hands. Marilyn's self-doubt, perfectionism, and constant stress led the girl to start taking sleeping pills to reduce anxiety and insomnia. But it didn't help. Pills, on the contrary, negatively affected her condition, respectively, her ability to work. Alcohol was soon added to them. The actress began to forget her lines, was often late, or did not come to the shooting at all. Marriage to athlete Joe DiMaggio further aggravated the psychological state of the actress. The famous baseball player was conservative, very jealous of Marilyn, constantly controlling her, and did not even shy away from physical violence. As a result, their marriage lasted less than a year. Trying to start her own business in the form of a production company, Marilyn Monroe Productions, could not help but add stress. And in the same period, the actress began to visit a psychotherapist on the recommendation of Lee Strasberg, who taught her acting. The director believed that psychoanalysis was very important for any actor to project their emotional traumas into performances. 
Her last marriage to playwright Arthur Miller was also difficult to call happy. Society criticized the choice, partly because of his leftist views, partly because they were poorly represented together, a chic blonde and an intellectual, and due to Miller's association with the communists, Monroe was subjected to emotional pressure from the FBI. Naturally, the mental problems of the actress began to worsen. She often forgot her lines, and sometimes she could not pronounce elementary phrases. There was also abuse of those substances harmful to health, which we talked about earlier. During the filming of the famous movie, Some Like It Hot, serious difficulties arose. Monroe demanded dozens of repetitions and could not remember her lines. Even splitting the text into phrases did not help her. It was hard for her to concentrate in front of the camera. We are not machines, no matter how much they want to say we are, we are not. Marilyn and Arthur often quarreled. He even began scandals with her on the set. After one quarrel with her husband, the actress was found in the room in a serious condition under sleeping pills, aggravated by the use of champagne. The actress had to be hospitalized. Everything was complicated by the fact that Marilyn was pregnant. But she did not deliver the baby since, in the fifth month, she had a miscarriage. In general, from 1956 to 1958, due to stress and substance problems, she had two miscarriages and one ectopic pregnancy. After the morally difficult filming of The Misfits, where Miller was a screenwriter and brought Monroe to tears, the couple broke up. Despite that, she continued to work hard. Now, on her bedside table, in addition to sleeping pills, there were stimulants that were supposed to help Monroe wake up. Some believe that heavier substances were later added to that cocktail. I try to find myself, and the best thing I can do in this direction is to try to prove to myself that I'm an actress. And I hope to do so. I care about work. It is the only thing you can rely on in this life. In the 60s, everyone began to talk about the decline of the Monroe era. The movies released in 1961 and 1962 were not successful, and the actress herself no longer had a naive, charming facial expression. Marilyn had already developed an addiction by that time. The actress's health was so seriously undermined that makeup was applied to her while she was still sleeping under the influence of sleeping pills. After another overdose in August, Filming was halted for the actress to spend a week detoxing in a Los Angeles hospital. Under the persuasion of one of the psychiatrists, Marilyn agreed to rehabilitation in comfortable conditions, as it firstly seemed to her. And in fact, she was placed in a mental hospital in a room for violent patients. She was shut down like crazy. Marilyn cried and sobbed, screamed to be let out, and pounded on the locked steel doors with her fists until she cut her hands to the bone but they paid no attention to her. In one of her letters to her psychiatrist, Greenson, Marilyn wrote, I'm sure I will end up insane if this nightmare continues. Please help me. The hospital here is the last place I should be. She was saved by Joe, who helped her transfer to more comfortable conditions. But that experience stayed with her forever. The inability to withstand pressure from society, prolonged depression and childhood traumas place the actress deeper and deeper into hopelessness and addiction. According to rumors, the actress's numerous relations with famous men, including Frank Sinatra, Eve Montand, and Marlon Brando, became a peculiar way to cope with loneliness. Because I think I have also a, a gay side to me, also a sad side. And I think that's the way with people also. But there is something in people where they want, they need solitude for a while. The disruption of the filming of Something's Got to Give due to the actress's health problems led to the dismissal of Marilyn. They sued her for $750,000 and started spreading rumors about the actress, calling her mentally ill. But before her death, Marilyn made peace with the studio and signed a contract for two films. And she spent the weekend before her death with Joe DiMaggio. It was even rumored that they planned to marry again. According to official information, Marilyn Monroe died on the night of August 5, 1962, at her home in Brentwood. In the evening, according to housekeeper Eunice Murray, the actress complained of being very tired and went into the bedroom, taking her phone with her. Pat Newcomb, her press agent, recalled that Marilyn did not sleep well and was annoyed by something. 
Interestingly, the psychiatrist Dr. Ralph Greenson, who conducted several psychotherapy sessions with Monroe, spent most of that day with her. And eyewitnesses noticed that after those sessions, the actress was doped with something. Many would later claim to have spoken to Monroe during her last hours, but that has never been confirmed. Say goodbye to Pat for me, for the president, and yourself, because you're a nice guy. She allegedly told Peter Lawford, her colleague. The housekeeper, who saw a light on in the master bedroom at 3 a.m., found her. Since the bedroom door was closed, Eunice Murray went out into the garden and through the window saw a naked Marilyn lying motionless on the bed in an unnatural position, face down and with a telephone receiver in her hand. The housekeeper called Dr. Ralph Greenson. He smashed the bedroom window and pronounced her dead, which was later confirmed by Marilyn's doctor, Dr. Hyman Engelberg, at 3.50 a.m. In 35 minutes, they notified the Los Angeles Police Department of the woman's death. Pathologists found that Marilyn died between 8 and 10.30 p.m., and a large dose of pills were found in her blood, the names of which we will not name due to the fact that YouTube can block us for this. Vials with drugs were found on the bedside table. Their dose was several times higher than the norm, which ruled out accidental poisoning. Monroe's doctors shared with detectives that the actress suffered from depression, anxiety attacks, and mood changes. Therefore, the investigation concluded the cause of death was suicide. But in that story, there were blank spots that gave rise to many questions and mysteries. Sergeant Jack Clemens, the first to arrive at the scene of the tragedy at the house of Marilyn Monroe on the night of August 5, 1962, was sure that she had been killed. The testimonies looked strange or did not coincide with each other. For example, a psychotherapist initially claimed that he arrived after midnight, but then why did their testimonies with the housekeeper not agree on time? Why did they only call the police at around 4 a.m. and after agreeing with the film studio? Was it a coincidence that Marilyn died on the last day of her housekeeper's work, who did not want to leave her settled warm place? And why was the housekeeper doing laundry in the middle of the night lamenting that they had done nothing wrong? Or was there someone else at Marilyn's house that night? In 2005, John Minor, a former Los Angeles prosecutor, released information that calls into question the version of Marilyn's suicide. According to secret recordings, which he said the actress's psychiatrist gave him to listen to, Monroe did not even think about death in the last months before her death. They were made by Greenson by the actress herself. Most likely, they were part of her therapy. Interestingly, the psychiatrist did not give the notes themselves to the prosecutor and took a promise from him that what he heard would not be made public. But Minor made notes that he published many years later. On them, Marilyn absorbed in sex plans, sex with Joan Crawford, dreamed of being taken seriously as an actress, and analyzed unsuccessful marriages. Minor wrote, there was no way this woman could kill herself. She had specific plans for the future. She knew exactly what she wanted. Lee Strasberg told her, perhaps maliciously, that she had a Shakespearean spark, and she was captivated by this idea. After the death of the famous actress, one of the most popular theories was the murder associated with the relations between Marilyn and the Kennedy brothers. Theoretically, it was possible. After breaking up with Arthur Miller, the actress had several high-profile relationships, and why shouldn't the name of the American president appear on that list? Kennedy had a playboy reputation. They met at several events in the early 60s, and modern biographers of Monroe are sure that there was a connection between them in 1961 through 1962. According to the information, they were introduced by Frank Sinatra. Yes, and those close to them confirm that relation. The actress had been seen at private parties with Bobby and John, dancing or making intimate conversation. Sometimes, Marilyn and John met secretly during his official trips, often talking on the phone. But the only photograph showing both brothers and Marilyn was this one, taken after Monroe's famous birthday speech. There, she, in a capure dress sewn with beads, neither naked nor dressed, sang the famous song. Happy birthday! President. For the sake of that short performance, she interrupted the shooting in Los Angeles, the very film Something's Got to Give, and as a result, she was fired from the studio. 
Such a performance was considered scandalous in those days. And after the performance, everyone spoke with confidence about their relationship. And that promised a big scandal for the president. Kennedy's dissatisfaction was obvious as he took the warm performance of his mistress very coldly. There was a theory that the highest circles were worried that information about the relationship between Marilyn and Kennedy would come out. And her addiction to alcohol due to stress in the last years of her life allegedly made Monroe dangerous, uncontrollable, and compromising the president with her behavior. She was even supposedly warned of the possible consequences if she didn't stop talking about it. The actress hoped for great love and the opportunity to become the first lady. And after the disappointment, she claimed that she would publicly tell the whole truth about their relationship. There was information that a week before her death, Marilyn spent the weekend at Lake Tahoe, where Sinatra invited her at the request of the Kennedy brothers. The girl was allegedly drugged and a series of provocative photographs were taken to have leverage over her. But what made society think that the woman's death was connected with the Kennedy clan? Many believe that she was killed because she knew too much. Much of the evidence and testimonies obtained during the investigation were surprisingly missed. Photographs showing Monroe's bruises were also missed. All records of the actress's phone calls were immediately seized by special services. And Sergeant Jack Clem found it strange that the bedroom looked completely clean, and the door to the bedroom was closed even though Marilyn had never locked it after her stay in the mental hospital. Despite the presence of barbiturates inside the actress, during the autopsy, he did not find sleeping pills. According to the testimony, there were no internal organs during the autopsy. Therefore, he was unable to conduct a full examination. In 1985, Eunice Murray told the BBC that on the evening of the 4th of August, Robert Kennedy came to the actress. But she soon retracted her testimony because of memory. As proof of that, some witnesses allegedly saw Robert John F. Kennedy in the evening before Marilyn's death in her house. Screams and the sound of breaking glass were heard. But the true circumstances of the death of Marilyn Monroe remain a mystery to this day. Many biographers, such as Donald Wolfe and James Haspiel, believe that John F. Kennedy was to blame for her death. However, they adhered to different theories of her death. They didn't know if he had done it himself or with someone's help. Milo Spiragilio, a private detective, also held this theory, believing that Marilyn got pregnant by the president. Anthony Summers claimed that Robert ordered her dead because she knew a lot about nuclear tests and plans of murdering Fidel Castro. He also put Monroe in bed with the Cuban to persuade him to his side. Some believed that Marilyn was killed because of her sympathies with communism under the influence of her ex-husband, Arthur Miller. That was confirmed by her visit to socialist Cuba and a meeting with Nikita Khrushchev in 1959. But there were other theories. For example, there were thoughts that Dr. Greenson, who prescribed the actress too many sleeping pills, was to blame. Their relationship generally went beyond the professional, and the doctor often gave the actress pills indiscriminately and incorrectly approached the selection of drugs, which led to the fact that she got hooked on them. Donald Spoto believed the doctor did everything to subdue her to his will. He was confident that he could make her do whatever he wanted, Spoto wrote. Peter Schnug, in turn, wrote that the cause of her death was an accident. According to the writer, the doctors did not sufficiently inform the actress about the side effects of the medications. In addition, different doctors prescribed her other drugs that were incompatible. Walter Bernstein said, Marilyn is a good source of income for people of his breed. From this woman, it was possible to extract money not only for treatment, but even for the fabrication of her illnesses. Considering an actress sick, dependent on others and in trouble, all this became a vital need for him and others like him. There was something sinister about Ralph Greenson. It was well known that he had an incredible influence on her. After all, he was the only one who had such an impact on Monroe and the only one who, according to the official version, saw her alive. The version of the murder became so popular that the district attorney, Van de Camp, decided to reinvestigate it in the 80s, but did not find solid evidence in that regard. And we can only guess what caused the death of the sex star of the 20th century. Well, or who caused it? Marilyn was and remains a symbol of female sexuality for both women and men. They try to inherit her image, boutiques and salons are named after her, and her life and death became the basis for the creation of dozens of books and films. Someone writes about her as a victim of her time, 
someone as a skilled manipulator, but no one was able to fully figure out who Marilyn Monroe was. Uh, do I feel happy in life? Um, um, let's see. Let's say I hope I'm finding happiness. Well, there was another star who stood out by no less mysterious death, the king of pop music, Michael Jackson. Despite the official reason, similar to Monroe, some people do not believe in coincidences. Click on the icon that appeared on your screen and find out what mysteries of the death of Michael Jackson holds in itself. And don't forget to like our video. It was Biographer Express. See you very soon.